so clearly something happened. Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is What's the DIY, and today we've got a problem. Uh, so about a week ago now, actually it was exactly a week ago, I was printing on my printer like normal, uh, and I got a thermal runaway error for the bed. Um, now, if you follow uh, any open source news or um, 3D printing news in general, you know that, that it's kind of ironic that that would happen because it's kind of been uh, a talked about topic because of the ANET, I believe it's the A8 printers that have just been catching on fire because the error code isn't in their firmware. They disable it to make more room on the board. And there's just been a lot of discussion in general about the Marlin firmware and being in compliance with it. So there have been a lot of videos and articles written about different features. And even um, Tom from Tom's 3D uh, did a video where he actually tested Thermal Runaway um, being enabled on a bunch of different printers by forcing it by shorting out pins. Uh, so. I've been following all this, so when I got the error, I admit I was a little bit cocky. I was like, oh, I know exactly how to fix this. Um, so when I opened it up, I was expecting to see um, a broken connector here on the solder point. I'd seen um, another person who does 3D printing have that error, so I was like, I can just solder that back in. But no, the, both solder points were okay. And then the next like, most common thing for that is that the thermistor gets loose from the bed. So I take off the bed, I look, the thermistor's fine, it's right there. Um, so then uh, the next common thing is that there's a loose connection. So I open up, and look at the board and you know the thermistor, I unplug it, replug it back in, everything's fine. I tested the power connector from the board, nice and tight. I'm like, okay, that's weird. So it could be a dead thermistor, that's another common thing. So I powered up the printer, Prusa, they have um, a thing that like try to heat up the bed with like a hair dryer and see if you get a change in the temperature on your display. So I did that. I took my uh, hair dryer. Um, it was heating up. I even uh, double checked it with my handheld thermometer. So anyway, everything was matching up. So then I was, I was really like, what the heck is going on? And now we're like at two hours of troubleshooting and everything. So. Then I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna look at the board. Maybe there's a short on the actual board. So that's when I started, I unplugged the thermistor and then I was like, I'm gonna unplug the, the bed. And I was like, yeah, there's definitely no short here. Everything's really, really tight. It's a really tight connection. I'm pulling and pulling and finally I got it out. And then that's when I saw this melted connector. And you know, well, there's your problem. Um, yeah, I was surprised to see that. Um, the melted, uh, so this is a Molex connector uh, and basically the terminal on the Molex connector from the um, VCC connection is just melted to, to nothing. Uh, the Molex from the uh, hot end is totally fine. So that tells me, Something happened uh, with this. Um, I did email Prusa Research um, and I didn't hear back right away, uh, but it was a holiday in the EU this week. It was VE Day and then also May Day was the week before. So I'm sure that people are taking time off and stuff. And um, I did hear from them at the end of this week. And so we're chatting, but I, I basically told them what I'm about to tell you. Um, as you know, I print a lot and I do a lot of projects with 3D printing. So I didn't want to be down for a really long time. So I started, you know, researching like what could cause this. And um, Kirby actually on Twitter, uh, I did post a picture of this melted connector because I was, uh, I was admittedly a bit depressed after it happened, not gonna lie. Uh, so he suggested that maybe the connection was actually a little bit loose and that it, because of that, the resistance built up and, and caused it to overheat and melt. And I, you know, I think that makes the most sense because I think it looks like this probably happened um, over time. I don't think it was all at once because it honestly, it looks like the plastic melted 
um, and then hardened and then melted and hardened. Like it kind of has that look to it. Uh, so I have a feeling that that is what happened. And it actually, it matches a little bit of a timeline. Cause about a month ago, I redid the strain relief for the heated bed because of all the discussion on the Marlin firmware and they talked about strain relief and everything. And so I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna redo that and make sure it's in good shape. But I admittedly, I, I haven't checked the connectors on the board since I built the printer. That's not good. That's on me. Um, you should do that. I'm sure most people don't, but you should. Uh, and I guess uh, I'm putting this all out there so that if you have a printer, like, you know, just check your connectors. Um, just make sure everything's nice and tight. But I have a feeling when I redid the strain relief that I may have ironically strained uh, the power connector. I might have pulled on it a little bit and that could have caused it to become a little bit loose. So that's my theory. Um, and you know, all is not lost. It's just the Molex connector. And Molex connectors, there are screws in the bottom. You can replace them. I got some from DigiKey. I'll link the part down below because that's what um, a lot of boards take. And as you can see, like there's multiple Molex on here. So now I have some spares. Uh, one other part I did get, which was a little bit pricey and I may not necessarily need to, but I did get a replacement Rambo mini board from Matter Hackers. That's the board that Prusa uses in their M, uh, in their Mark II S and I believe the Mark II originally uh, printers. And I just I just got a new board. And um, the Molex connector on here is definitely has melted plastic in it. You're not going to be able to get a solid connection. So I could I could totally desolder this. Um, Molex connector and replace it because it's just through hole, but I'm honestly I'm not that good at desoldering right now I'm just not and the way I see it even if I'm able to Get this board if replace the Molex connector on this board I at least I have a spare hanging around and with the amount that I print You know, it's not unreasonable that I might need to actually replace um, a board at some point so yeah, I'm sure there's gonna be some people that are gonna say that was a waste of money, but I'd also rather be safe than sorry, you know, so especially with um, Printers, so basically what we're gonna do here We're gonna unplug everything take the board out kind of inspect here see if anything else but the Molex connector had a problem uh, And so then we're gonna put the new board in we're gonna replace this Molex connector from the heated bed um, And then we're gonna replug everything in go have to reflash the firmware uh, and then we'll we'll see if we're if we're in okay shape. All right, so here's the board that came with my Prusa that's been running on. Uh, this is the Molex connector. You should be able to see melted plastic in there. And upon further inspection, it does look like a little bit of the melted plastic also got on the ground pin. This is the connector that will go to the heated bed. Uh, this is the connector that comes, um, that goes to the, thir uh, to the hot end. Uh, these are the power connectors that come from the power supply and those are totally clean. Uh, so, and I, I looked over the board, like all the fuses and everything, everything's fine. Like I don't see any bridging or anything like that. Back of the board's clean. Um, it does look like the solder point might have got, it might have gotten that hot that it, it reflowed a little. Um, like it just has that look to it um, compared to the other solder points. Um, but yeah, there's no, there's definitely some, some discoloration that shows there was some hotter than necessary temperatures on the board there. So it's definitely just that one point and that really kind of reinforces my idea that the connector was loose. And as you can see, it'd be, you could totally like desolder this. But so that's the old board. This is the new board. Um, as you can see, they're the same because they're both um, Rambo, uh, mini Rambos 1.3A. Uh, they're identical. First, we're gonna replace the Molex connector on the bed, but here we go.
So as far as repairs go, that went pretty smoothly. Um, of course, it was fairly straightforward. We were swapping out a board and just changing a connector. Um, seeing the melted connector is extremely uh, upsetting. <laughs> uh, it's so melted, but oh well. And you know, like I said, I could have probably just swapped in a new Molex connector to this board, but. It just wasn't something I w felt prepared to kind of risk now, especially if there was something, some underlying issue with this board or something that I was missing. Uh, so we're gonna try the new board and I'm actually gonna do a follow-up video in a month to see if we um, see anything that is a symptom of what happened before happening again. These things happen. Uh, I feel like they happen to me more than others, uh, just in general in life, but you know, uh, it's, it's always a good learning experience, but if you're having any issues with your printer and you came across this video as a result, I hope that you're empowered to try to fix it, even if it means replacing parts just outright rather than fixing the actual broken part. Uh, I think that's what's great about 3D printing, especially from printers that are rep wrap and everything, like it makes it really easy for you to kind of take care of the problems yourself. Uh, so that you're not stuck waiting for um, support to help you. Um, but that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave a question or comments down below. Let me know if you've had any similar issues with your printer, uh, what you've had to do to resolve it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more content like this, hopefully more actually using the printer rather than fixing it. And until next time, this is from Blitz City DIY.